Hello, my name is Liliana Hernandez, and I'm a board member with the Virginia Family and Children's Trust Fund. I'm Kelly Henderson. I'm executive director of a nonprofit organization called Formed Families Forward. Hello, everyone. My name is Tabitha Kelly, and I'm the Arlington County's Director of Social Services. Hi, I'm Chris Seaton. I'm an Arlington County foster parent and also the director of Project Belong Virginia. And I'm Benji Tran, a former foster care youth from Arlington County, Virginia, and I hope you'll join us in conversation. I'm interested in this work. Um, I've been working on child welfare issues um, nationally for the last uh, 10 years, um, and I'm just very interested in making sure that we're really supporting um, children as they come into the system, and especially for those children that we can't find the forever family for, and they end up having to age out of the system, making sure that we've provided them with enough supports to make sure that they can have a successful transition to adulthood, either through um, post-secondary to college or to work, um, and making sure that we provide the supports that they need. I came to this through uh, a couple different channels. My first love and first career is special education. I was a special education teacher and worked a lot with kids with special needs and disabilities. And then I ended up uh, with my husband fostering to adopt uh, two of our three boys and uh, worked with some other moms and dads to create an organization to support uh, foster adoptive and kinship families who are raising children with special needs. I have spent my entire career working with children and families. I have a special interest in ensuring that children are safe, um, particularly our most vulnerable children. want to make sure that families are healthy and strong enough to uh, raise and protect their children and to keep them from abuse in foster care, if at all possible. So I've spent a great deal of my career working on family strengthening strategies. And as of right now, I am the director, the director of social services in Arlington. And so I have a wonderful staff of about 90 um, staff members who range from child protective services, foster care adoption, foster parent recruitment and retention, we do parenting education, we also have children's mental health and, and child care services. So we have a full continuum of care that I'm just really fortunate to be a part of in Arlington and it's really, um, I think, an ideal situation for those families who need support. And so that's what my life's work really is my mission has been to make sure that children are healthy and strong and thriving because they are our best resource. Mm. Yeah, Wonderful. I'm Chris Seaton and I came into this work through honestly a, a group that I was a part of, an educational group that I was a part of. I met my first foster family um, and I asked them so many questions mm -hmm. and that sort of wooed me into becoming an Arlington County foster parent and I can uh, I can agree with you on a fabulous county. Um, about four years ago, we were approved and have had a placement for a couple of years. And I'm not currently with a placement now, but from that came the um, desire to really help the church come around um, getting into this work and caring for vulnerable ch children. Um, and so that's what we are doing with Project Belong is to really go into the church and help the church, these natural communities wrap around these, these vulnerable kids and the families that are serving them through foster care and adoption and kinship care in whatever way. So our aim is to really help the church be strong and educated around some of the issues that come with kids who've been through trauma. And I'm Benji. I'm a former foster care youth in Arlington County. And basically, I came about into the foster care system when I was about probably in sixth, no, nope, seventh grade in Williamsburg Middle School. And I had remembered being in school. And then Miss Flynn, my counselor, had told me I wasn't getting on the school bus and that I was going to stay after school. And then Child Protective Services came and poof, I was in foster care. Mm -hmm. So I came about this in an interesting way. 
um, heard about this in, in conversation through a few friends of mine and by checking my email, which no one does anymore, <laughs> my age anyways. Um, and I'm currently in a transitional program out of foster care. Um, I'm told that Virginia is one of the few states who has one of these transitional programs for youth leaving foster care. Mm -hmm. And I, it's really good and it's helped me understand better how to survive in the world as an adult. And I mean, I'm interested in hearing more about the story that um, your friends who were foster parents and uh, foster family told you about that wooed you into this. Mm -hmm. um, if, if you wouldn't mind sharing Absolutely. it with us. Well, she, we, this was a weekly group that we would go to and she would come up, she really was a nurse and so she would specialize in children who had a lot of medical needs. Mm -hmm. And so she would come in and she would ha sort of help babies very often who are coming, maybe who have um, yeah extreme needs or, or coming off of um, being addicted, she would really be helping those children through. And I just peppered her with all sorts mm -hmm. of questions like, how do you do this and how, how do you love these children but yet give them back? And mm -hmm. she was mm -hmm. the first person who, she was through Fairfax County, but she was the first person who helped me really understand these children deserve your love more than, more than anything. Um, and a little bit of, the little bit of hardness that as a foster parent we might feel helping them reunite or, you know, it's helping tough. them. Mm -hmm. it, yeah, it's worth it because these children have had stories that are really difficult. And so that was the first aha moment. But that was really, um, I would say, about eight years ago. Mm. I hadn't ever known a foster parent mm -hmm. or foster children before that. That's yeah. really interesting. Um, I know that the, the main perception or of foster care. Um, I remember mentioning it in my senior year at Yorktown High School when we were doing, in our, it was in our government class, and we were discussing on an article what should we do with this kid if we were in the official's shoes on what to do with the child after this family incident happened. And I was like, foster care! And everyone gasped in the room. And I was like, well, why? Well, what's wrong? And I'm like, well, you could go from foster care to adoption instead of all those other people just yelling adoption. Um, I know that a lot of them don't have any insight into how it works. Um, I know that I myself am not an expert in it, but I knew one gateway on how it worked. Um, but I'm just realizing that it seems like foster care just seems to get a very bad rep. And uh, there's this report that I had read that it seems that Virginia's, Virginia's not handling it very well, but I happen to think they're doing just fine. Um, and I mean, I think we can talk about um, the report in a sense. and find out what exactly it's talking about and pinpoint which way it could go. Um, if anyone would like to share what they think so of it. So Benji, you said that you think it's doing just fine and that's really wonderful to hear from someone who lived it very closely mm -hmm. and is living it. Can you talk about what characteristics that were so powerful for you in your experience with foster care that makes you um, feel that it was a process? Feel confident yeah. that yeah, it yeah. was doing it right? Um, I happen to believe that well, for, I, I'd like to answer that question, but in order to answer that in a way that people can understand it well, I think I'd also have to sidetrack a little bit to talk about why it might not work for some people or why it, the answer is there, but not everyone finds it. Um, I happen to believe that foster children themselves are more or less damaged people, um, depending on how extreme their situation was before they went into care. Um, they did not have the average, or what you could call average, an average upbringing. Um, so they do not have the same interactions with other people socially, or had the same educational drive, or just were able to play out. I, I was not allowed to play outside when I was with my family, um, with my uh, biological mother. I was stuck in the apartment my whole life, um, other than going to school and back. Um, I just. I didn't know what a hanger was. I always referred to it as a Vietnamese wor uh, word, which means a wung ao with uh, Macau. So that's an interesting thing. Um, so I just knew foreign words, and yes, I was in Hilt class, et cetera, et cetera. But um, based on how the foster care system is doing a good job um, and versus it not doing a good job, I noticed that in the program, like the one I was in that was called Lift, 
which is not the car service. It's uh, <laughs> it's called it's it's, it's for living independently for tomorrow, mm -hmm. and it's basically from what I could tell and what I understood is that they gave you a unit with a roommate who was also either a former foster child or someone who is homeless and their youth as well. Um, you both would be roommates and you'd live in the apartment. Um, mm -hmm. You'd get a um, standardized rent, all utilities, all included. Um, since I was part of Lyft 2, I believe, uh, Arlington County was so nice to fund me and I was <laughs> happy. Um, and I received a stipend to cover it and the other part of the stipend was supposed to help me either just survive while I go to school or th the requirements to do the program is you either had to be in school or you had to work. So it wasn't hard. Um, the director Hans Wampler had told me that you could even go to clown school and hey, it counts. Um, either that was a joke or not, I, I'm pretty sure that it, it could have worked as long as you were doing something productive with your life. Um, but I noticed being in the program, meeting the other few uh, participants of the program, I noticed also that the program was a little bit different. They did not really allow the participants to interact with one, an with one mm. another. Yeah. So I'd have to meet them randomly at the giant next door. We were on Route 1 next to the Krispy Kreme. Mm. And basically, it was interesting. Like, I guess there were privacy issues mm. and mm -hmm. legal agreements in a sense. But I found about five or six of them, interacted with them. And a lot of them, uh, after listening bits and pieces, had gotten kicked out or removed from the program. And it was usually over drug usage or alcohol usage or you know, violent incidents. And I happened to think that, well, it wasn't that hard to stay in the program. And I just happened to believe that after reading the report, going, slinging back and forth between answering your question and going back to different things. Um, I remember in the report it said that there was a concern that they weren't, we weren't preparing, Virginia was not preparing foster kids for the real world be, and also social interaction. They were not ready for life. Mm -hmm. And me seeing this happen in the program of them being kicked out and being let go of the program um, was, you know, a little disturbing. But I, I then thought that it's quite possible that the program itself was fine. They gave you a stipend. They gave you a place to live. You were supposed to get a job or go to NOVA. And, well, I think some of them without a certain guidance. I understand that the Lyft program was meant to be you be your own manager or you know you uh -huh. take care of yourself. There's sort of a safety net. But I wish that there was someone there that could have said, no, 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 you can't do this stuff. You, let's, uh -huh. let's have a little bit more uh, control over the thing. Even though I understand that they wanted them to be their own adult, leaving a program like that was a little difficult. It's just how, w what Virginia was doing right was having a program. What they didn't do right was, well, I wish that. <laughs> yeah, and that, that, that is one of the tough sort of questions control. when you have young people who are over than age 18, but they're staying in foster care until mm -hmm. age 21 because they are technically adults, but they're still in foster care. And so the state is trying to assist them and provide services. And so, as you said, and some people want that at, want to be independent, and some some young people might want to have some type of case manager or someone who's still there who could help provide. And while some young person might be fine with those rules, someone else might think, oh, there's a curfew, there's all of these different rules, and that might be too much for them to handle. That's right. Um, and so are you going to school at NOVA? Uh, I was for two semesters, and then I had gotten out to go back with my mother to help care for her. Mm -hmm. um, that's just something about me personally. I guess that's something that was part of Benji mm -hmm. that, right. uh, that stayed with me from going into foster care and leaving foster care, so I'm still the same Benji. Mm -hmm. um, but with, like you said, with how some might be independent and some are need a manager, um, I was largely independent in the Lyft program. I basically did almost anything I wanted, and that was nice. But um, in the sense that I did it responsibly, the, the program itself needed responsible people mm -hmm. to participate in it. Mm -hmm. And you know, it's, it's with great power comes great responsibility. <laughs> hey, Spider-Man. <laughs> um, but uh, it, it, it's the whole thing is like, how as a foster kid, um, it's young, it's, it, we're dealing with young adults, young kids, where they're still kids, I'm still a kid, I, do, I really don't think of, my, of myself as an adult, uh, not at all. Um, male brains not really developed until like 25, <laughs> so there you go. 25, 29, right. actually. Yeah, so right. see, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not an right. adult, truly, <laughs> I will not vouch that I am an adult, um, but it, it, we're dealing with people who have just left school or who are still in school, because I did meet a few who were still in high school, 
and they're being given this home to take care of and they're supposed to, you know, be for them. They're supposed to present themselves in a great manner to, you know, show the world what they got. Um, and it's tough for a lot of them. Mm -hmm. And I know that having to do weekly meetups with their caseworkers on the, in the program and then the county that's helping them um, is, might be a little tough on them. But in general, they, I think that the case should have been made to them um, that they're all trying to help them. And the perception is that most former foster kids and current foster kids are always seeing the system as like an evil thing still, even if they're, mm -hmm. you know, living off of it. Um, I happen to think that the Lyft program, while it was good, um, that they held, like programs like this, I don't like it how um, they hold their hands the whole way. I remember going to, uh, sidetracking off again, sorry, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm going everywhere. Um, there was this other program called, it's not a program, it was like a group, it was called Speak Out. And Chauncey Strong, I believe, is the head of it. Um, and, and sorry, Chauncey, I mean, hey, mm -hmm. he, he's a nice guy, but uh, the group itself had a wonderful idea, goal behind it. It's just that the participants who were former foster kids who are no longer in the program, or it, it was like a, it was an age range. I think it was to 25, uh, 13 to 25 year olds. And the whole point was the group was to create a, what was to come up with ideas and then eventually try to get a idea to legislation and then make a mm -hmm. new change to the law of, of foster care in Virginia. Mm -hmm. But um, when I was invited to that, I, it was a two hour drive back and forth, so that sucked. Um, but I was pumped, ready to go, and when I arrived there to sit there for a few hours of the meeting, it was run by a whole bunch of, it was youth led, great, mm -hmm. sounds great, I guess, um, but being optimistic and also being very cautious on when I went into the room, I noticed that a lot of the, the president's cabinet, as they called it, mm -hmm. um, it was around 23, 25 year olds, and um, they were very arrogant, I'd have to say, and mm -hmm. they, it, 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 was, it was painful to watch because Chauncey really emphasized that it was youth-led, and when the conversation was going on for hours about just a shirt and no one brought up funding on it, I had to bring up how much will the funding cost on this shirt just to advertise your group. They finally said a hundred bucks, and I was like, okay, I just could give you a hundred bucks here and we could move on. <laughs> I was more, I cared a lot more about the situation at hand. Mm -hmm. And when I kept, and because I was a guest there, they had to vote on whether or not I could join. I knew I wasn't gonna join after saying that. Mm -hmm. uh, they were not happy with me. But a few of the other kids um, who were joining and had to give their foster care backstory because that was kind of the, the thing, you trade in your story, you join the group. Um, a few, a lot of them, not a few, um, had proposed changes to Virginia's law, which I know they don't have any real power over per the, by a single person. Um, they were just saying what they wanted. Mm -hmm. um, what infuriated me, um, to say the least, was that many of them in the Speak Out program slash group were selfish to an extent. Um, I, jo I wanted to join the group because what was told to me or what was advertised to me was that when you join this group, you would be trying to create a law to help other former uh, or other current foster. and younger mm -hmm. foster kids with the new changes you make to the laws and all that. Um, but all I heard in that entire three, four hour meeting was, oh, I want to extend my stipend to 27 so I can get eye care and I want to go to out of, uh, out of country schools in Europe and all that and I want them to pay for it. And I'm like, I know that even foster care, mm -hmm. like p kids who aren't even in foster care, who have rich families, would even be like, no, you're not going out of state, you're not going out of this and this and that. They wanted so much. They wanted to have their, you know, they wanted to be fed by hand and everything. And it, it really annoyed me to no end mm -hmm. and so painful. One of the things that foster care systems try to do is hear from mm -hmm. the youth and the family, because the youth voice matters. Uh, there's a saying that, you know, nothing about us without us, right. Right? right? And so the system has changed and improved over time so that the youth can feel empowered and be, be empowered enough to vocalize what their needs are. And some of that is just so profound for 
people like me to listen to mm -hmm. so that I can take some of those changes mm -hmm. into account. Mm -hmm. Same thing with birth parents. Mm -hmm. You want to hear from the people right. like yourself who have experienced the system. Um, just going back a little bit, foster care is a temporary safe haven for those kids when no other option exists, right? And so the social workers who come out really try to work with families first mm -hmm. so that they can preserve or stabilize the situation, ensure child safety, but sometimes those hard decisions have to be made and children have to be removed from their birth parents and brought into foster care. We as a child welfare system, hope and work towards mm -hmm. reuniting children with their families as quickly as possible when it's safe to do so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the main objective. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. Right. And so for those kids and families, we work really hard, visits, there's a case manager that's assigned to the family to work with them and to ensure that the child is visiting their birth parents and the system has improved over time to the point where we expect foster parents and birth parents to actually form a village, mm -hmm. a family around that child so that the child understands that what happens over here at this house is the same thing that's going to happen here. Consistency. There's consistency, right. there's continuity of care, and hopefully um, safety. Mm -hmm. and that the adults can talk and form a good plan around the child with the case manager's mm -hmm. support so that they can be involved in groups and they can get the services that they need to better themselves. Mm -hmm. Like the, for the parents to mitigate whatever those reasons why that child came into care, they can reduce that harm mm -hmm. So that their children can be returned to them, because you know, anytime you remove a child, there's trauma, sure. and so those youth who are removed and come into foster care, they've experienced a lot, mm -hmm. and sometimes even as the workers involved, we don't learn that until we've built the trust, and until mm -hmm. their mm -hmm. children feel safe to talk to us, and we do a lot of assessments when children first come in, but. Youth who are removed and placed in foster care have experienced a fair amount of trauma and need a lot of services in order to um, feel safe. Mm -hmm. And I think that's where foster parents come in, mm -hmm. that's where the church community comes in, um, so that hopefully we can work as a team to uh, have a good continuum of care mm -hmm. and reunite those families, but if the family can't, be reunited with their parents than looking for relatives. Mm -hmm. It's really, really important right. that we look for for kin. Right. And I know that's something. And that's one of the things the report said that unfortunately in report, Virginia doesn't always, uh, you know, the, the the best practice is that whenever a child, if the child has to be removed and has to come into foster care because there is such a trauma in terms of breaking that family separation, ideally if you place a child with a relative, then they're still within their family yes. and the child itself doesn't might not think of it as they're coming into foster care because Absolutely. they're staying with their aunt or they're staying with their grandmother. For a time. For, the, for a time period. Yes. And so, but we know that Virginia has had difficulty in the past in terms of reaching out to relatives, licensing relatives to have them Providing become foster the parents. That relative so wh <laughs> what do you think are some of the steps that Virginia is now taking to try to have more relatives to, to reach out to relatives and to find them? Yeah, I think finding them is one of the things that the report noticed is mm -hmm. still a challenge, not yes. necessarily in Arlington, but certainly across the state is the recruitment efforts. Um, I think there's a recommendation that actually mm -hmm. speaks to sort of the expectation that, that we would be a little firmer with birth families in terms mm -hmm. of identifying Absolutely possible sure. placements. Um, but I, as, a, as an organization that works with foster, adoptive, and kinship, families, one of the things we hear a lot is that the readiness is not there necessarily um, in terms of those families being ready to take on the academic, the educational, mm -hmm. the even the financial Absolutely, needs sure. of the children that right. suddenly um, become uh, part of their family in right. terms of the day-to-day -day living. And so I think that's a, a challenge, not only in kinship, but even in, in um, foster mm -hmm. care. We, you mentioned the, the fractured relationships that often are, are 
foster youth have experienced by the time that they come into care, um, some of the challenges that they, and so foster families are doing a huge mm -hmm. uh, service, and so we want to do everything we can to support them, having a community in the faith, uh, in, their, in their place of worship, having a community uh, supported through our, our our the public uh, agencies right. as Absolutely. well as our nonprofits that mm -hmm. really can come around and say, we have uh, options for you to build skills and maintain those relationships that are so hard for some of our youth and our, yeah. um, uh, because it, it's a challenge to maintain a relationship mm -hmm. uh, with a, a child who's just come to your home, whether it's a kin sure. or a foster yeah. situation, sure. um, and, and, and stay the course because mm -hmm. um, sometimes yeah. it's, it's yeah. been and a And a what are some road. of the kind of it, like mental health services, crisis support services, because we know unfortunately that, you know, Absolutely. sometimes there's like an emergency placement and the child has to be moved into this home and that might be at like 10 o'clock at night. Mm -hmm. The child mm -hmm. might start acting up on a Saturday night and that might be why some foster parents are thinking, do I really want to do this? Because it really is a lot of work. So what kind mm -hmm. of support do you guys have in Arlington for families after hours to really mm -hmm. help those families? Well, we have a range of supports. Uh, we now have same day access for mental health services. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's throughout the state. So that's an amazing new intervention for children who need expedited uh, mental health services. So you can come in same day, get an intake assessment, and then be linked with a therapist. Mm -hmm. So that's really, really critical. We also have mobile crisis response. Mm -hmm. And so teams can come out to the foster parent's home or to the birth parent's home or to the, that kin caregiver in the event that there is a crisis happening. On, um, in Arlington County, we have an emergency services team that can evaluate in the event that that child needs to be evaluated for hospitalization even, mm -hmm. if it becomes that severe of a crisis. So there's a range of, of resources mm -hmm. as well as and both of our organizations I think are trying to augment some mm -hmm. of the really mm -hmm. good county things that are we're brand new but our mission is to inspire to inspire recruit and resource and some mm -hmm. of that comes through different trainings on just parenting techniques mm -hmm. or and Everything that I experienced through the county here in Arlington was fantastic. <laughs> but I didn't pay you to say <laughs> that. <laughs> I can say it truthfully. Um, but maybe there were a few things I wish I could have gone to or it was a whole day and I couldn't get the whole day. Mm -hmm. And so I know both of our organizations try and offer some other types of resources. Sure. And we're lucky now. I, I can't imagine prior to 10 years ago, there's just so much research on the brain and, yes. mm -hmm. and ways that you can address some of the trauma that, that you were speaking mm -hmm. about just in, that affects kids in mm -hmm. different ways and, and adults, frankly, mm -hmm. it's, it's such mm -hmm. a generational mm -hmm. type of issue. Um, so I think that's a, that's a great thing too, that we're trying to support what the county's doing I appreciate as well. that because oftentimes people look at the county as, mm -hmm. like you said, as like sort of the bad guys or the foster care system is just the child welfare agency. Right. Well, child protection is everybody's job. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's a community issue. It's a nationwide issue. And I love the fact that all of you are thinking about how you can link arms with the local counties mm -hmm. to form a system of care for children because it's gonna take everyone from prevention mm -hmm. to intervention and after care services to make sure that families stay healthy and strong, right? Mm -hmm. Can you imagine getting a call at, I don't know, two o'clock in the morning mm -hmm. and you're an aunt and you wanna take three kids. Mm -hmm. And you have a one you bedroom a apartment. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh -oh. you, you need a community of support mm -hmm. around you. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I think it's wonderful that we're developing these systems of care. I think one of the challenges that families still um, still struggle with is navigating those systems. Mm -hmm. And I think that's Absolutely. something that we mm -hmm. continue to work on with our partners is you don't know what you don't know. Mm -hmm. And so if these great crisis intervention services are out there, if this wonderful mm -hmm. training is out there, if right. peer supports are mm -hmm. out there, but you don't have those relationships built and you don't have a way of, of figuring out how to access them or even knowing that they are there mm -hmm. to access, I think that's another challenge that we continue. Right. And, and linking arms exactly. is a way to do that. Yeah, to expand on um, just navigating the system itself. Um, I happen to, and to answer more of your question on what Virginia is doing right, um, I think I'm going to just 
refer more to Arlington itself because that's what I've had more experience with. Don't know about the bigger picture of Virginia. But I know that I have access to, let's say, at calling my social worker um, and having her schedule me a cab to any event that I need. <laughs> and as long as it's educational and helpful, then I can <laughs> do it. And, you know, it's even nice, like, I can even do one where it's part of a group like the NOW program run by Ramon Montes. Um, mm -hmm. I hope that's how I pronounce his name. I guess so. Um, but it's a really good group. It's basically, um, he told me that you never really leave now unless you really leave now, which didn't make sense to me. <laughs> but um, it basically sets you up with how to get a job. And since I already had a job, yeah. I was, he just met with me at once a month mm -hmm. and would just check in and how things were going. But when I was in now for the first half of the year, you would see guest speakers come in, a plumber, a DJ. Mm -hmm. It, it mm -hmm. ranged mm -hmm. really far. And they would tell you the salary, how it works, and just workshops on how to do it. And it was interesting. They, they, he even had a field trip to the iHeart radio station. Oh, um, so that was nice. Um, I unfortunately couldn't go, they couldn't go to that one, so I didn't know how that one ended up. Um, but it's things like that where Virgin, um, Arlington is doing really well. But um, I think just like navigating it, I think the children or the youth in foster care are not aware of that, or they mm -hmm. are, yeah. or they were, but they weren't exactly paying attention when their worker was mm -hmm. telling them because they were uninterested in the sense that they were still traumatized, I guess, right. mm -hmm. and they were still affected yeah, right. by what had right. happened, right. even though years later, um, I just seem to have a very bleak image of foster youths in general. I apologize for <laughs> my kind. Um, but I just believe that uh, the system is doing a very good job, and it's just that if we're not going to place blame on either the youth or the system, I think we just improve the system a little bit more then and just keep on trying to notify them about the um, you know, different mm -hmm. options they have mm -hmm. to right. gain a better lifestyle and programs like these. So I mean, having a cab to wherever you need to go is really great. <laughs> well, and, and that, that is something that's luckily here in Arlington, I think, you know, because Virginia is so large, mm -hmm. you know, in fact, we worked with people around the state and obviously in some of our more rural counties, transportation is a, it's huge, a, it's issue a huge issue because things are not as close and it's not like a, just a 10 minute ride like it is in Arlington maybe to get from one side to the other. And, you know, local counties have to kind of pay for a lot of those things. I mean, the state provides some funding, but it might really depend on those local counties that might not have the resources. And so we talk about, you know, fact does support some trauma-informed community networks, and we're mm -hmm. trying to expand mm -hmm. that work around mm -hmm. the state so that we can really build this continuum of care, as we're saying, where people are going to really understand um, the effects of trauma and how young people and birth parents are all at different levels around the understanding your story and about being able to trust you know, the workers that you have and the foster parents that you have. Some young people might be able to trust that foster parent right away. And some young people might come into that home and it might take them a long time. Mm -hmm. But as long as that foster parent is willing to say, I am here with you, I am gonna be here and support you all of, all the way, you know, and make sure that that foster parent might not now be someone who's gonna go with them to their school, go see them if they're in a play. You know, we wanna make sure that young people are participating in all of these activities that we call normalcy. Yeah. <laughs> yes. um, no, but you know, yeah. do you see any kind of, well, as you've been a foster parent, any challenges with kind of helping young people to kind of do some of those normal activities the way that you would with any That's of your children? That's actually been revolutionary, especially as I help churches engage because we really, I was just today talking with Arlington County um, about provide, having a church host a foster parents night out. Mm -hmm. And normalcy helps us be able to do that. Of course, we background check all of the volunteers and we train them a very brief training, um, more of an education around kids in care. But that's an excellent opportunity for for people to get involved mm -hmm. who might want to get their toe wet before they jump into mm -hmm. the pool of, of foster care. And that's really what we're after because I, for the two events that we've done, one in um, Arlington and one in Fairfax, consistently the, the reaction of the volunteers is, 
wow, these kids are great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's what we want to spread because they are and they're worth it. They're Absolutely really worth, worth it. it. Absolutely. And we want to make sure that a part of that normalcy is just making sure that they have the same resources and opportunities as any other young person. Right. So if there's someone who likes sports, making sure that you're going to be able exactly. to join the team exactly. and that this, you know, the county is going to be able to help you to pay for the uniform, whatever. If you're going to be in the band, then you're going to pay Absolutely. a cello. The they're going to yeah. make sure that you have the instrument and that you have the way to practice and to be able to do those things. So it's really about helping, having the agency help to really be that parent who can help you to, to, to do anything that you would. Mm -hmm. And giving the foster parent or the kinship caregiver or the youth themselves, the adult, the authority and the, right. the freedom mm -hmm. to make those to decisions, make decisions and trust that they will make good decisions. And I think, you know, foster, since this is, this is foster care awareness, but the most foster families have a huge um, burden and are, are serving the community extremely well. And Absolutely. so we need to honor that that dedication with supports and, and trust and relationships that really allow them to do their mm -hmm. job within the community um, and, 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 um, and really, you know, do the job they need to do with, ch with the children, be the advocates in school, for example, mm -hmm. be the advocates in, in medical situations mm -hmm. um, and allow them the freedom to, to be that, that best advocate that they, they can be for that child. Mm -hmm. Yes. And we do a lot of training mm -hmm. around mm -hmm. that so that foster parents feel equipped mm -hmm. and ready to partner with us to make those decisions. Arlington County and several counties throughout Virginia have what's called a Kinship Navigator mm -hmm. program so that we can help kin and relative caregivers navigate the system. Mm -hmm. We help both parents to get linked with resources and services. There's a lot that the system needs to do. There's a lot that the system is doing. Mm -hmm. And I think that over time, as we are linking with one another, both nonprofits, other county resources, um, working with our General Assembly, that things will change. <laughs> yes. We have new legislation coming out. So I'm hoping that that will impact um, children's lives in a positive way invigorate them and everything and make them <laughs> feel the person they need to be and they want to be when they get older and hopefully things turn out well with how Virginia handles their new legislation.